Well, welcome again, folks. This is Liz Sorry, your host with the Tax Advisor and Business Coach Success Podcast. Uh, today, we have a really, really amazing guest. And I mean by that because this is a topic that, uh, well, I, I really get on going to enjoy, you know, having this conversation with David. Uh, David Mordell, um, how are you today? I'm very good. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it today. No, and thank you for your time. Uh, today, topic we're going to talk about why we want to invest in gold or other precious metals. Um, as we always say, I mean, to me as a woman, diamonds are our best friend. But I love the shiny metal. I don't know about you, but, uh, gold has always been one of my favorite ones. So I'm going to go ahead and do a brief intro about you, David. That way, the audience uh, understands your background, which is very extensive. So. David Mordell proudly serves as a chief analysis uh, and opportunity researcher for the portfolio wealthglobal.com, correct, David? That is correct, yes, okay. absolutely. And he has a master's degree in education and decades of investing experience. David has the financial know how and passion for teaching that has boosted the bottom line of countless clients. Focusing on the data rather than the emotions, which is a major issue when we do investment, David is always on the lookout for the new pathways to financial freedom. Count on David for wealth building strategies and resources that investors of all financial backgrounds. Well, welcome, welcome, David. And I'm glad, like I said, that we have you in this special show. And um, let's just dive in, because like I said, for me, gold, um, I love it. I mean, what can I look? I have a little gold here, right? And I, and I like silver too, but gold is still much better. So tell us a little bit, what was your interest of getting into um, selling gold? And, and, and please specify, if you don't mind, a little more if you want to add something more to, you, to, your, uh, to your background. I'm sure you have more than, than what, it's, what I just mentioned over here in, uh, in the intro. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. First of all, thank you for bringing me on your show. I'm a fan. And oh, Thank uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. And uh, well, yeah, okay, my name is David Modell, and I have a YouTube channel called Looking at the Markets. And I've been, I have over 400 videos for free that people can watch and enjoy and learn from. And for the past couple of years, many websites and many newsletters have approached me saying, David, we want to we want to tap into your expertise. And I'm very picky, very selective about who I associate myself with. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and I, I chose Portfolio Wealth Global because the founder, who is Mr. Tom Beck, uh, he's had some amazing calls, for example, in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, he called uh, light, I believe it was, yeah, he called Ethereum at uh, 35, Litecoin at 25, Dash at 15, Cardano at around four cents. Uh, you know, if, uh, wouldn't it be nice if we all invested a, uh, at those prices, right? It would be, would it be? Yeah, my yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and his newsletter over at portfoliowealthglobal.com, if people want to check out the newsletter, it is free. Uh, has had some amazing calls, not only in the crypto space but also in precious metals, which we will be talking about today. Uh, I'd also like to talk about artificial intelligence and some other areas that I feel are going to explode in the rest of 2018 and beyond. Uh, so now I'm part of the financial newsletter. Uh, and also we have many free reports we'd like to uh, talk about as well. Uh, but uh, I'm glad to be able to spread the education to the people. Well, and David, uh, thank you for that. Um, I, I always believe that knowledge is power. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's a, a very strong expression that mostly we use, but it's even better when you actually put to action that knowledge, right? Because mm -hmm. you can know a lot, but if you don't take actions, you know, take steps, nada, as we say in, you know, in Spanish, nothing's going to happen, right? So right. Let, let me understand a little bit now. Do you recommend certain um, ETFs or stocks that actually invest in gold? Or do you actually also recommend having the real metal, uh, you know, um, not under your bed, by all means, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, definitely in, <laughs> in some sort of safety box or somewhere where you involve, where you can have your, your goals. So tell me the difference about both, if you do both, that way the audience know what the options are when it comes to this precious metal. 
That's a great question. Um, it's okay to do both. It's okay to have, I'm a big fan of the physical precious metals. Sure. Gold, silver, uh, in terms of, yeah, in terms of purchasing power, uh, gold and silver have been so much better than let's just say holding fiat money, uh, Absolutely. you know, dollars, uh, which have, uh, yeah, think about the rate of inflation, which is between two and 3% per year. So if you just hold fiat currency, you're losing money. It, it may not feel like it, but you're losing value every year. Yes. Uh, whereas, yeah, whereas the precious metals, the physical precious metals have been a wonderful store of value and the ultimate form of money. Uh, gold and silver have been around for over 5,000 years as a currency and as a great way to store value safely. Um, the highest gold price, just historically speaking, recently. Yeah. Well, you mind sharing around. that with us? Because that, that's a good thing, especially people who are not very familiar. I'm not a pro neither in, in the gold sector. I, I will tell you a little background that I did invest in paper gold with the cold stocks. Okay. And, um, and it did well for, for some time. And I think that was like, and I always kind of share a little bit of my personal experience. And <laughs> when, when I have, uh, you know, these type of, uh, uh, you know, conversations as I call them because that's where they are mm -hmm. during the episodes um, sure. but for me um, unfortunately I had to end up you know selling it and it was a very well-known stock uh, but mm -hmm. it didn't do very well so I kind of learned a lesson from that so if you don't mind kind of going a little deeper into the two strategies that way people understand how important it is to do the right research when you're investing into gold paper or real thing in the metal Right. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned research. Uh, that is what we're all about at Portfolio Wealth Global. That's why we have the free newsletter at the homepage there and the free reports. Well, uh, let's backtrack a little if that's okay and talk about gold and its price action. Uh, it reached uh, a high, I'm talking about physical gold here, at around $1,900 uh, in 2011. And then we had a challenging bear market, very challenging to say the least. Uh, after 2011, finally the price of gold started to come back up uh, at around uh, around 2016 or so. Uh, currently, we've got gold at around the $1,300 level. It's struggling right now. We've got silver in the 16s. Uh, we've got a gold to silver ratio at around, well, it peaked. Yeah, that's something people don't pay attention to enough. The gold to silver ratio. Look that up if you get a chance. Google it if you have to. And look at the history of it. Uh, it reached the low 80s recently, which has only happened four times since uh, the United States went off the gold standard back in 1971. Uh, and after the gold to silver ratio gets into the low 80s, what tends to happen, no guarantees of course, is that silver usually outperforms at that point. Uh, right. So I'm told, yeah. I was not and aware of that, no, not at all. So how recent was this drop? What was it? Yeah, I mean, recently, you know, gold has been struggling, but so has silver. Silver is kind of like gold's more volatile little brother. That's the kind of the way I like to think of it. Sure. Uh, and it, I think it's a wonderful time to have some uh, physical precious metals, including some gold and some silver. I would encourage people to consider uh, if they already have gold and silver in their possession, uh, maybe rebalance a little bit. Uh, consider because the gold to silver ratio is so high. And there tends to be mean reversion when yeah. that happens. Uh, consider maybe lightening uh, up on the gold holdings and adding some silver. That doesn't mean you have to change the overall amount of precious metals. It's just a rebalancing. Just something to think about. Now, what about, uh, oh, and by the way, in terms of seasonality, uh, yes. gold and gold prices tend to outperform in the last three months of the year. We're talking uh, October, November, and December. This is seasonality, not a guarantee, but this is what tends to happen. And so as we get into the latter half of 2018, we can look forward to perhaps a, a resurgence in these precious metals prices. That's what I'm counting on uh, as a physical precious metals owner. So, so uh, and, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but so in other words, you're seeing that the fourth quarter of mostly every year, again, without yeah. any guarantees, but uh, normally uh, the price drops, that's a good time to then buy, you know, the metal. Is that correct? Well, the, the price tends to rise in those, in those last three months. And oh, the, so the, okay. I misunderstood you. Okay. Yeah. And so the time to get in is not before, is not while that's happening, but before, if before. possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Now, what about stocks? Uh, well, miners, because people often get into the, the smaller companies, the smaller miners in gold, silver, and other precious metals, that's been a difficult investment class, to say the least, uh, in the last few years, if you look at the charts of just about any mining stock. Uh, but you know, we're doing a lot of research at Portfolio Wealth Global, and uh, when we see the trend, when we see the trends starting to head higher, we'll definitely pull the trigger on certain companies. Uh, we've done it before. Uh, we've had five baggers and even ten baggers, meaning you know five, ten times uh, profits uh, on your uh, you know return on investment. Uh, Tom Beck, the founder of Portfolio Wealth Global, has been investing in gold since 1999. He's written a report about gold. I think uh, your audience would definitely be interested in that. So if you're watching and listening to this right now, you might want to check out PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash gold playbook. That's forward slash gold, G-O-L-D, playbook, P-L-A-Y-B-O-O-K. Uh, and if you'll be kind enough to put that in the, that link in the description so sure. people can just click on that, that'd be wonderful. Um, again, we, we've had some amazing returns with Tom Beck's uh, calls before. We're planning on doing it again over and over. Excellent. That's good. And, and again, I, I always, you know, I always emphasize that, you know, if you want to be able to invest in things that others, professionals have done the research in your behalf. Mm -hmm. And even when we pay for advisory service or consulting, whatever word you want to use, um, it's important because it's, it's kind of like a safety nest in a way that yes. you're, you're able to say, okay, there is maybe, I don't know, I don't know how many, I'm just going to throw out 500 different stocks to sell, you know, gold, mm -hmm. but which one, which one do you pick? Now, even, even if you do some of do yourself approach, like I have mentioned a lot in through other episodes that I know that now with the new generation, uh, the millennium, they're very used to doing the, their own things. Right. Uh, but we need to have someone that has that expertise who has been there uh, through some period of time. Right. And, and understands yeah what needs to be invested in what type of stock because like I said my own personal experience and I'm not going to mention the symbol because I'm not here to uh, promote their uh, stock symbol <laughs> but uh, I was very content at the beginning when I you know I invested into it and it did well and then suddenly out of the blue like anything else you know, a drop and it, and it was just in decline. It was just continuing declining, declining. Got to a point that I said, okay, time to sell and, you know, buy something else, right? And you right. just have to move on. And that's a reality that I also want to share with the audience and with you because you're an expert in this case, right, David? That sometimes we need to know, okay, and not attach what our emotions to our investments mm. because money is money. So if you're losing too much, uh, you know, don't have a sentimental, you know, connection to that stock because you might end up losing it all. And that's a problem. And, and I think there's a rule out there that says if you lose more than 50%, what happens? You have to make 100% of what you now have to recoup your losses if you lose 50%, which is heartbreaking. Yes, it and is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's rough. Um, so be careful what you invest in. I'm not a licensed or registered investment advisor. Uh, nothing in this recording is to be construed as an investment advice. It's just a uh, personal, you know, well, it's a personal opinion and, and, and some yes. of the things that we might have some knowledge about, but we're not certified yes. for it, but definitely uh, yeah, for legal disclaimer, uh, if anyone's watching this and they want to come after us, yeah, no, uh, of course, of course. you're expressing your opinion because what well, we've done it in the past, personally, we've done our investments. So like I tell people, just, you know, watch out. I mean, uh, have always, I call that uh, inner circle of people that you trust. Yes. Uh, that they, 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 they're investing their money, right? That's where you want to invest your money. Uh, in, in, you know, and it really can help. I mean, it really can. So uh, in, in your um, portfolio, does that one have more than one stock in gold? Is it an ETF? Can you, can you explain that a little more? Is it a combination? Can they buy something like, like you were saying at the beginning uh, where they can probably buy silver along with the gold. Do you have like a combination with that? You do, excellent, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. As I mentioned, this I think is a great time to rebalance in favor of silver. I'm talking about the physical uh, because it's perfectly fine to have both. Um, we can get into the mining stocks because if we only have the physical 
precious metals, let's be honest, those don't move. Those are not fast movers. And so that could be the safer part of one's portfolio, the safety play. Uh, but then for some growth, for some real yield, and perhaps a little bit more risk to go along with it, we can very carefully right. uh, select. We want to be selective. We want to be picky. We can have some mining stocks as well in the precious metal space. And that's why we're putting out the report. Uh, and Tom Beck will be making some announcements about that very soon on the newsletter on the homepage. But again, if we go to gold, you know, portfolio wealth global dot com forward slash gold playbook. Uh, we can see the research that Tom Beck has been doing. Uh, he's been doing quite well. Like I mentioned, the five baggers and the 10 baggers. And so we want to avail ourselves. Him, of, but we needed that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if we only do the precious metals, the physical stuff, uh, we're going to have, yes, safety in our portfolio, but we also want some growth. And so it's okay to mix it up. We want to balance it. We want to diversify between perhaps some mining stocks as well as some physical holdings. Uh, what's great about the physical is that uh, if things go haywire in the economy, in the markets, we'll have that. We'll have actual physical metals in our possession. No one can we take just that away. Pack our bags, put all precious metals, and we get the first plane out of the country. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, but I'm telling you, people will be. Yeah, people will <laughs> want to have the physical stuff in their possession if things get really bad, uh, which could certainly happen. We never know. Uh, no one saw, or hardly anyone saw, 2008, 2009 coming. Uh, so all. you know, the good times never last forever, Not and we've bad. had. We've had a we have an old old bull market right now in U.S. equities, and so if anybody's thinking they don't need to protect themselves somehow, if they're thinking they don't need to diversify, well, they do. Um, and actually, if, if people want to see uh, Tom Beck's portfolio, if they want to see all of his holdings, get a personal uh, view, a peek into what he has, uh, they can go to portfoliowealthglobal.com forward slash portfolio. That's easy to remember, right? Easy <laughs> enough. Slash, yeah. <laughs> yeah, forward slash uh, portfolio wealth global dot com forward slash portfolio. They'll mm -hmm. actually get to see everything uh, in his holdings right now. Uh, and so that's that's a great way to know. Yeah, you know, again, not telling you what to buy, but to get that research, because you mentioned you don't want to just hand your money over to somebody and just trust them. You want to do you mentioned the research. That's what it's all about. I believe in doing it myself with the help of other people who spend all day you know, seven days a week researching uh, what's out there. What are the best stocks? What are the best precious metals? How much gold? How much silver? So forward slash portfolio, you can get a peek into what Tom Beck is uh, investing in right now. I think that's a great, a great way to start. Now, David, uh, you say that you have the newsletter. So that way my audience understands how do you make your percentage? I mean, is there a, a sort of... Uh, you know, management fee or that way they understand too what their investment's going to be if they go, you know, and decide to invest in your portfolio. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Everything we do over at Portfolio Wealth Global is free. Uh, the newsletter on the homepage, if, if they sign up for it, put in their email address, uh, that's free. All the reports I've mentioned today, Gold Playbook, uh, portfolio, those those are all free. Uh, you know, it's not like going into uh, a bank, you know, Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo, someone like that, walking in, handing over your money to a fund manager, a money manager, who is going to charge you a hefty fee to manage your money. And eight out of, sadly, eight out of 10 of these money managers in any given year underperform the S&P 500. Meaning That's that sad. if somebody, yeah, if somebody had just gone on to E-Trade and or whatever broker they like and purchased an index fund yes. uh, with, with a very low expense ratio, they would have outperformed eight out of 10 of these money managers in any given year and they wouldn't have had to pay those hefty fees. What a disappointment, huh? Yeah. That, yeah. It, I think that all of us yeah. were really, at least I know, <clears throat> in my own personal opinion, excuse me, is that I'm willing to pay a professional I have no problem paying a professional because I'm a professional myself and right. for their knowledge and their experience right but yep. the worst feeling really the worst feeling is knowing that you have invested that money and this person or this firm make you lose so much 
Yeah. So you're like wondering, why did I pay you? Yep. So, you know, so they got their, 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 their whatever percentage. Uh, but, you know, now my losses, it, it, it's all mine. So, right. you know, so that's kind of, it's sad in that. So the newsletter does not have a subscription fee, like you said, right? It's free. Correct. It's a that monthly is- newsletter. And they, but what I'm trying to understand in a way also again the the the, you know the my followers subscribers they can they can comprehend is Mm -hmm. what is your 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 i guess your commission or whatever it is that way they have an idea to whether you manage the portfolios for them or they actually do have to have a separate broker account and they purchase what you recommend can you explain that a little more in detail please Sure. Uh, All we can do is give people the research and tell people what we might be invested in. Uh, We are not in the business of managing other people's money. You're not. Uh, So, and what's great about that is we allow people to make decisions for themselves. Uh, When you just, when people hand over retirees, savers, just hand over their money to, uh, again, Wells Fargo or Bank of America, someone like that, they're just kind of hoping that the person is qualified. They're hoping that the person has their best interests in mind, which they usually don't. They're usually right. trying to just get those hefty fees and commissions. And I'm not saying don't trust other people, but you can think for yourself because nobody's going to care about your money as much as you do. That's just that the reality so, of it. So, so true, David. I so true. And 110%. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I, I know that what you're doing and what we're trying to do at Portfolio Wealth Global is trying to empower people, educate people, help people to help themselves and help people to make those decisions. And that's why I encourage everybody to subscribe. If you're, if you're listening to that, to this uh, right now, subscribe uh, to the show that you're listening to right now. That's Check right. back regularly so you can get that great information. Uh, because w- the show you're listening to right now, it, it's, it shouldn't be an alternative source of information. It should be your main source. Thank you. Uh, and, yeah, and, and so subscribe. If you're listening right now, subscribe. Don't hesitate. Um, Thank you, David. And, and yeah. you know, one of the things I started as this year because I thought it was really important, um, and it was that when I started my podcast, actually early last year, uh, mm-hmm. I decided as of this year to actually uh, – do the two formats between you know doing the video and also the audio because I thought it was important for my YouTube uh, you know subscribers to mm-hmm. visualize and, and, and watch the you know the interview and so on. Um, yeah. So definitely people who are listening to this and maybe you know uh, by all means don't be driving, don't be doing anything else you shouldn't be doing. Uh, but I mean you know you have that opportunity to actually go to the YouTube channel and, and watch the interview and vice versa, right? If, if, if you cannot watch it, then at least you can listen to it. Yep. Um, David, when when it comes to and, and that was a good you know a uh, 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 suggestion from your part. So. Diversifying has always been a, a, you know, a very uh, important aspect of uh, investing in anything that we do. Like you said, don't put all your eggs in, you know, one, what are they calling? In one basket. Yeah, you never want to do that. So you cannot put all just one and then hope and wish that, oof, you know, you, it's going to be the lucky one because it might not be the lucky one, by the way. Right. Uh, so, but definitely diversifying. What would be your suggestion when it comes to how many stocks maybe – uh, an average Joe and Jane might want to have uh, that, you know, they can have in stocks, maybe uh, ETFs or mutual funds if you recommend them. I don't know if you do it or not. Um, so if you can tell a little bit the difference, you know, between those three, um, it will help the audience on, uh, also to understand why they have different options. Sure. When you just hand over your money, again, to Bank of America, Wells Fargo, somebody like that, uh, they're going to put your a lot of your portfolio uh, a- after they take out those fees mm-hmm. into mutual funds, which oftentimes they are instructed to to push or sell certain ones. Again, we're talking about not necessarily having your best interest in mind. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, you might consider uh, building your own mutual fund. That means availing yourself of the best research and finding out, cherry picking the best of the best companies in any sector or niche. Uh, When we put out our reports, we are very selective about, we have very strict criteria about, uh, for example, the mining stocks uh, in that gold playbook. Uh, We're very selective about uh, 
how much we put into any particular sector. You do want to diversify. You don't want to put your eggs all into one basket and just buy all gold and silver mining stocks. Uh, because if the sector takes a dive, then all of your holdings will go down. Uh, if you, that's true of any sector. If you, yeah, if you just buy blue chip stocks, then if the S&P 500 and the Dow tank, if the economy goes down, you're going to be in rough shape with your portfolio. You're going to have a tough road ahead of you, uh, kind of like a year 2008, 2009 situation all over again. Oh, I know that You don't that want one. that. And I'm sure yeah. a lot of people who are listening or just watching to this video, they, they, they probably were in the same boat I was. So yeah, yeah. I lost a lot of money during that period. And guess what? It, I never recover, uh, you know, for that kind of amount of money that I lost. And, uh, and, and, and I yeah. think that in general, you know, the majority of the audience here, you know, they, they're, they're self-employed entrepreneurs and possibly, you know, many of them are still working full-time jobs and mm -hmm. just starting their side gig, as I right. call it, or their hobby and converting to business. And yep. uh, I think what's important that no matter what phase of your life you're in right now, we know that we must invest for what we love the most, which is passive income. And right. the reason behind that is because we work hard as it is uh, throughout our entire lifetime and we want something else. We want the money to work for us. And I will yeah. say that. So what better to know that you're investing now and by all means something happens and you're not able to, you know, continue working, even if it's for a short period of time, but knowing that you have that safety net, yeah. that at least you have, you know, some money coming in, if you really need it, you can pull it out because you it's generating that passive income every month, then at least you have that security um, yeah. so we cannot always rely in work and neither in just in business I mean that that is a true fact I mean things happen um, so yeah. definitely you know that's that's very important that I wanted to bring up uh, why passive income has always been uh, you know something that all of us want I, I don't care what's your background I mean it's just something that's really necessary to have yeah. You know that safety uh, cushion that I call. So going back to your to to, to your uh, recommendations. So we definitely want to have a little mix of everything, silver and gold. And yes, we want to have the metal itself, but we also want to have the stocks. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, people ask me for specific picks. Uh, yes. I, I, if I can, if I can give you a specific pick right now. I, I don't uh, mind. I mean, if you're okay with that, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, gold, silver, you want to have some of many different sectors. Okay. It's okay to have some blue chips. Uh, it, it, it's okay to have some consumer discretionary. It's, it's okay to have some utilities. That's a little bit safer. Uh, technology, I, yeah, we technology, want technology. Sure, yeah. sure, absolutely. Energy, right? Energy, yep, yep. Finance. Uh, you can build your own, exactly, the, the financials. You can build your own mutual fund. Uh, if you do it carefully and pick the best of the best. Uh, another sector that I'm uh, excited about and I've been diversifying into is artificial intelligence. I, I don't oh, know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah uh, kind of like uh, 2017 was the year of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Uh, I believe that 2018 and beyond, they're going to be the year of artificial intelligence. Internet of things, right? Internet, That's how they yeah, call yeah. yeah. I know, I, 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 I do. I have invested in them and I, I'm strongly recommended to. I think they're going to do phenomenal. I think the only fear that I, at least, again, I share my own opinion in this, it, and what I have read out of many articles is people a little bit more skeptical because of what happened with the, you know, the big burst of technology stocks that people have not forgot about that bad experience. So right. people are still a little bit skeptical about going into internet of things, but I, I, I like them to understand this different. It's not the same thing that it was back then. This is a, a different completely, you know, uh, technology system uh, and, and you're into that. So can you explain a little, if, if, if possible, the difference between what happened with those stocks, what they had to do related to technology versus to the ones that we're talking about the internet of things, please David. Sure, I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, talking about the internet of things, talking about machine learning here. It's the way of the future. No, actually it's the present. It's here now, whether you even know it or not. If you have a smartphone, you're using artificial intelligence. That's right. uh, if you have a, 
if you have an email account, you're using artificial intelligence. You're using it. If, if you ever went to a bank recently, you're using, or an ATM, you're using artificial intelligence whether you know it or not. The share of jobs that are going to require artificial intelligence learning or understanding has increased 4.5 times in the past five years. Wow, incredible. So, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. So this is a revolution that's happening, and you could either adapt and adopt or be left behind. I would hate for your listeners and viewers to lose their jobs because they don't adapt and adopt the new technology. Uh, and investors need to adapt as well. Yes. Sure, you can get, yeah, you can get into uh, Google, Alibaba, and other companies that have somewhat of a relationship with uh, artificial intelligence and, and machine learning, but those are not pure plays. Uh, I, I'll give a, a pick right now of Would mine and of Tom Beck's, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, it's, yeah, that's called Global Live, Global Live Technologies. And uh, yeah, and it's, it's available on the TSX Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker LIVE, live. And uh, if you're in the United States, it is LVVEF, LVVEF in the United States. EF, LVVDF? LVVEF. EF, okay, yeah. thank you. LVEF in the United States, LIVE in Canada, and it's Global Live Technologies. And I'm telling you, this is the only one that Tom Beck picked. And he's sifted through all kinds of companies that have some involvement in artificial intelligence, but he wanted a pure play. He wanted a company that is dedicated to it. And I'll, I'll tell you what, people can read the report at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash live, L-I-V-E. Uh, check it out, read it for yourself. I don't want to tell, try to tell people what to do. I want to tell people what I'm excited about, what Tom Absolutely. Beck is, is, yeah, and what we have and we're putting a position ourselves into these stocks. We're not just talking the talk, we're walking the walk. And it's not often that uh, Tom Beck puts his own personal capital into something, not a, at least not a big position like he has with Global Live. So check it out, forward slash live. I think you'll really be impressed. I think we're going to see some massive gains, no guarantees. I'm looking toward 2018, 2019 as the year of artificial intelligence market. Uh, put it on your calendar. It was said by David Modell today. <laughs> You'll thank me you later. You've been amazing. And, and before we wrap up the, the you know, this episode, um, real quick, um, again, going back to, um, because I know the, the main uh, topic about it, and we kind of uh, detour there a little bit with the, uh, uh, you know, internet of things, but I think it was important yeah. for, for a lot of people to understand what other things they can, you know, diversify their portfolio. Um, with the gold, uh, I, I, I did want to share real quick and, and just confirm this with me because since you understand a little more of that, when you buy the physical gold or silver, isn't there a, a threshold that you need to watch out when you buy, especially in cash or check or something like that? It has to do with the bank. Are you aware that at $10,000? So if you buy less than $10,000 worth, then it does not get reported to Uncle Sam. <laughs> so um, are you a little familiar with that part? Because I want you to share that. I don't want my, my listeners to start running, taking out their cash on the little bit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then running to buy, you know, the precious metals and understand that now they're going to get reported and then they're going to wonder what, what happened. What did you, you know, took all that money out, right? So uh, it's not a laundry money, by the way. But go ahead, David, before we can finish up, please. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, don't worry. The government is not going to seize your gold and your silver. Uh, it, it's not going to happen. Uh, I, I know people are concerned. Sometimes people don't trust necessarily the government or the central banks or anything like that. Yeah, you can you can buy. I mean, there are tax implications, right. but generally speaking, you can take a position in gold as as you wish. Um, it's yours. It's yours to keep, and no matter what happens, you'll have it in your possession. Just be aware of certain things. For one thing, it's going to cost some money to store it, probably because you don't want to just keep it in your house in the open. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it depends. I mean, how you know how much are you buying, right? <laughs> yeah, but no matter, you probably, right, you, you probably want to get stored in a safe place. Uh, it's going to cost money to ship it to you unless you just go somewhere and buy it in person. Uh, it's going to, it's something that you want to protect. And so it might cost money to have it protected. Right. And uh, it's going to, you're going to lose a little bit of value when you buy it and when you sell it, because you're not going to buy it at spot price. It's just not going to happen. 
right? Spot price is the actual value of the precious metal. Uh, you're going to pay a little bit above spot price. And then when you sell it, you're going to, you're not going to be able to sell it at, at spot price either. You're going to be selling it at a little bit less than spot price. And so there is a little bit of slippage when you buy and sell it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so that, that's the reality of it. And so that's why buying gold and silver mining stocks may be a, a better, easier way. You can just open up a brokerage account, whether it's with TD Ameritrade or E-Trade or wherever, mm -hmm. uh, find a low cost broker and you can invest in those. But again, mining stocks, they're volatile, they're movers. Uh, whereas the physical gold and silver, that's more of a safety play. I don't recommend putting 100% of your portfolio into gold and silver. It, it, we talked about diversifying. We talked about going right. into tech stocks, artificial intelligence, all those things, uh, some blue chips. Uh, it's okay to have some, some really safe things like utilities stocks. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. And yeah. so health, health is another sector. You mm -hmm. always want to have somehow in, in, in your portfolio. And we talk about financials. Uh, we want to talk about all these kind of different things. And, you know, yeah. David, um, uh, we are almost at the end of, a, of, of the episode, but I have to say that I, um, I really appreciate, you know, uh, all your, you know, recommendations and Absolutely. Uh, it, it's, it's been amazing because I think what's important is, and like I said, always the first prime, no matter what yeah. you do, no matter how much you fall in love with the stock, how much you fall in love with just precious metal, always try to diversify because it's true. It's like anything else. You got ups and downs and it's almost like a business, right? Because right. Yeah, the majority of the audience here, they're, they're business owners. And, and the thing with that is that I always tell business owners to not only you want to have one business, if you can have two, much better because you can have your ups and downs. Or yep. tick, sometimes some businesses go through what they call um, seasonal changes, right? Yep. So mm -hmm. if you have another business that can support you during the times that are low, then obviously, I mean, that's going to help. So, David, thank you so much. And once again, uh, uh, before we end the episode, your 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 contact information, your phone number, and we're going to have all that in, in the description description once we publish the episode but uh, give us that your contact information that way the audience know how to reach you please absolutely feel free to if you're watching or listening to this feel free to send me an email my name is david modell and my email address is david modell m-o-a-d-e-l at gmail.com i'll be glad to direct people in the, in, you know, again, I cannot tell people what to buy or sell, but I can give some guidance and tell people what I'm into. Right. Uh, and, and people ask me all the time, they say, uh, David, I didn't get a chance to write down all those reports. Guess what? We've put them all on one page. Uh, it's portfolio. Excellent. Yeah. It's portfolio wealth global.com forward slash money, M O N E Y forward slash money. That's easy to remember. All the reports are on one page. Uh, so you can just download them easily. Uh, feel free to contact me, folks. Um, I'm here to help you, and Portfolio Wealth Global is here to help you with our research, with Convex Research. Uh, sign up on the homepage if you want to get those free newsletters as well. No charge. We're, we're here to help you, and subscribe to the podcast you're listening to right now. Subscribe. Don't wait. All right. Thank you, David, for that. I really appreciate it. And like I said, it's been a pleasure to have you on our show. It really is. A lot of success to you. Um, and you know what, uh, definitely everyone who's listening and watching again, go and visit his, you know, website. Uh, it's a free newsletter. Uh, it's going to help you really make smart decisions with your money instead of just trying to guess, uh, or assume what's going to go up. Um, have other people like, like David that, that does this research and like he said, I mean, he spends hours in every single week. Uh, and, uh, I mean, again, we, we don't spend those hours, you know, doing research. So let them help you. Um, again, folks, uh, this is Lisa, your host. Uh, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe and follow us through the SoundCloud uh, podcast into the next episode. Once again, David, thank you so much. And thank you for everyone into the next episode. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks a lot.